Nigerian's chief government forensic pathologist, Dr. Dinesh Rao, will hang up his hat, or rather his coat, at the end of this month after doing a three-year stint in Jamaica. He's here with us on set now to talk about what has happened during that time. Good morning to you. Good morning. And welcome to Smile Jamaica. Um, I can only say it was good to have had you here because you made some significant developments during your time, but you say even with those developments, we are still about only 25% of where we need to be. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's uh, uh, twenty five percent uh, in the sense uh, since uh, we, uh, I can say that with all these new policies and strategies which we have implemented, uh, that I can say that we are moving in the right direction. You know, so. But we still have a ways to go. Ways, apparently. yes, ways to go in relation to, for example, the morgue. Once we have the morgue, we have the uh, securing of the or body and the evidence materials, you know, that will be in our custody. That is one part, and which we are working now. We are working now, and soon we are hoping to have it. And uh, beside this, the other factors like uh, the medical legal system, which we need to work on that. Okay, let's backtrack yeah. a little bit before we get. Let's let's go back um, to when you just came three yeah. years ago. Yeah. This reminds me of an interview we had yesterday with the, with the former Deputy Commissioner of Police who mm. said he was kind of shocked when he came here to see some of the things that were not in place. Right. This kind of mirrors your feeling when you came. Sure. What met you when you came here? See, uh, it was something, uh, uh, the most shocking thing was uh, backlog. You know, a person is dead. Imagine a family member has been dead and his body has been kept in a morgue for months and weeks waiting for... Uh, post-mortem. This is something which I felt more unusual and uh, it's besides the <coughs> post-mortem and storage. It is the evidence material which has been stored and that evidence material either is maybe contaminated or might have lost or might have been because decomposed because the bodies may be one over the other because there will be so many bodies, you know. Yes. So these are all the other factors as a forensic pathologist which came in mind, besides the storage cost, which is costing the government so much. But at the same time, you say we're still just 25% of where we need to be. So just in terms of the backlog, uh, what yes. progress have we made there? Yes, uh, in relation to the backlog, now definitely we have reached a stage where all homicides, we are ready to accept the bodies on the same day or at the maximum 48 hours. Or <laughs> the investigators ch uh, discussion that if he needs to have some more pros time to investigate and then you can uh, ask uh, request the postmortem to us but in, but, but in terms of the actual numbers though how have you been able to really make an dent in in the numbers in the number of cases yes in terms of the backlog the ba absolutely we have no backlog okay we have no backlog at all because from our side our services see we are working as two places simultaneously in one single day so See, all this, it was a very simple calculation. We see how many deaths are reported per day and how much we are disposing per day. This is the simple calculation which I adopted my strategy. Here's what I find interesting is that the government was paying the morgue. Yeah. But the morgue was only doing postmortems two days for the week? Yes, it, before that was two days. It was functioning two, uh, so two days and, you know. So that was where, which was very shocking for me, you know. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know the reasons behind it because this was before I came. But so now, then, they're, now yes, they're being done every day. Five days, and I'm proud to say that in a place like Kingston, we have all five days from Monday to Friday, the postmortem services uh, are available in Kingston and three days in Spanish town. And the, imagine a poor man has to spend $300, $400 to go to Spanish town and wait for the postmortem. Mm -hmm. So he can rather now walk down to the morgue and get the postmortem done. See, this is a service, we, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it is the common Jamaican, which we had to think that we should be more comfortable because we are serving the government. Yeah. And we have to give the best services to them. So this is where I did think about it and adopted the strategy and formed the policies. Let's yeah. talk, uh, I hate to bring up government again, but um, so the, the, you're now doing the postmortems five days a week at one hospital, three days a week at the other, yeah. from the two days that the government was paying the morgue to do. Right. The other thing that you have been able to get is access to basic tools that you needed. Because when you came, there was a shortage of body bags, of 
Yes, it was uh, actually regarding the body bags and all, I should, uh, we should thank the uh, Commissioner and Mr. Les Green and uh, even Mr. Vitor. Because uh, he, he Earl 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 yes, Earl Vitor, Earl. yes, okay. because he uh, lessened with the uh, Red Cross and he did uh, procure some body bags and uh, the commissioner. We didn't have, we didn't have body bags. See, that concept uh, was something which I didn't see actually. I don't know, but, but I didn't see it. So it's a team work, you know. The police and ourselves, we all sat together, and uh, and we say that something we had to secure. Because uh, secure the body in the sense, the evidence material attached to the body. That securing we did, uh, because which can be done only with the uh, body bags, you know, sealing. And then only we will open in the morgue and just open the seal and then see what exactly. That means the whole evidences which we have retrieved at the crime scene, it will be secure. And that will be made available to the pathologist. It will seem though that apart from that those... That was the, the, and especially the chain of custody and all this, you this know. This is like a twilight zone. It's yes, this is where, that, that is the standards. See, yeah, these are right. the standards. And definitely this helps the uh, efficiency of the criminal justice system, you know. Why should we think that things are not going to return to that sort of scenario? So, uh, see, because uh, as of the JCF has adopted as a standard operating procedures, so that I'm very confident that it will never go back to that stage. And beside this, the public is aware now the difference, you know. Right. If any changes come, the public is coming, uh, may come up with some uh, comments or suggestions or recommendations. But the JCF has strongly put the uh, uh, things in the force orders. That's, so this is all the leadership of the commissioner, or uh, the police, the whole of the team. And definitely, uh, we worked as together as a team and we are able to make some progress. Definitely, we made some progress. Speaking of progress, you made yeah. a proposal when you came about um, trying to train more homegrown forensic pathologists yes. because that's a problem that we have. You leave, yeah. there are three other gentlemen, three other gentlemen here yes. who are all from overseas. Right. Um, we have no local forensic pathologists yeah. currently. Currently, yeah. This is this is a fact. Yes, yes. And uh, you you proposed that we train some so we wouldn't end up in this situation. Yes, uh, that, that was my uh, honest proposal uh, for a nation, where especially in sectors like uh, medical legal system, where it's very difficult to uh, depend on a foreign pathologist. Even though I am a foreign pathologist, but I had to. Uh, since government has given me a responsible position, I should give a honest suggestion to the government. What? Where is so, the proposal now? Yes, I have just proposed. I have told that uh, the the team of uh, the, the the government should work in this direction, where mm -hmm. we should uh, train <coughs> the doctors who are interested in forensic path pathology. And we are. It will be so shocking to know that we have so much materials available. That is, so many crimes. It's a good material for study. So we will be better pathologists than any other pathologist in the world. On that matter of the number of crimes, there was yes. an article which suggested that you are leaving because you are fed up with the number of pollution, police shootings. Is this true? No, that is not true. See, for me, is death, I don't differentiate between a police shooting or a decomposed uh, or a natural death. For me, death is a death. So as a pathologist, my approach to the death is similar to any other case, irrespective of it's a police shooting or a gunman shooting for me it's a dead body so why are you leaving so i have completed my term my I, it's a three-year contract which i have signed for so now i'm ending my contract so i have to leave how yes. will your leaving affect um what's going on now with with post-mortems and so on we've got three other doctors who are going to have to do the work of of four is that going to slow things down a bit uh, no see uh, from the past one month uh, I and the forensic lab director and the, uh, the permanent secretary and the commissioner, we are working together that what best we can so that uh, the service will not be affected because it should not be dependent on one individual like me or any other doctor. The most important is the service and that service is the service of the nation. That should not be affected, and we are working. We are working for the past one week, and definitely uh, for the past fifteen days, we have experimented, and it's a good success. Twenty-five percent of the way. We, how do we get to the rest? Yes, definitely. See, oh, what happens is we are uh, moved in, moving in a right direction, and as we move on, so we slowly try to secure all other parts of the autopsy process. 
and we will slowly put the medical legal system in our right. What track. do we need to change? Exactly. For? What yes. do we need to do to make that happen? See, uh, like this now, the government is seriously considering on building a morgue, which may, I'm very confident with the present minister and the permanent secretary. Though they've said that a lot, though, the morgue has been <laughs> promised for a while. Yes, no, so now, uh, see, it is, that is true. But now uh, I have given uh, a proposal by considering the regional limitation and the economical limitation. So we can evolve a, a, a particular structure which definitely <coughs> suits our country, that is Jamaica. And once we have that, that will be another step that is, I can say, that will cover 50% of our... Uh, 50? 50%. Wow. Then we will just move on uh, in the direction where uh, the chain of custody, are securing the uh, working together, visiting the crime scene, for example, pathologists visiting the crime scene, definitely it will make tremendous changes to the uh, crime investigation. So these are, to achieve that stage, homegrown pathologists is again one part in that direction. You say some... Uh, yes. So some these are all together, I can constitute 100% according to me. What are some yes. of the, you say some unpopular decisions will also have to be made to move things forward what are some of those see, decisions? certain see uh, certain see you might have seen all the changes which uh, you think that it is good which i have made it didn't cost any money to the government what we did was just a shift in policy and adopt the strategy <coughs> which suits a common man mm -hmm. see today the common man come come to my office and he says that if the postmortem is not done we have made even the police accountable why it is not done why and we are able to locate where the body is now which funeral home the body is now the jurisdictions are defined the funeral contracting has come up see all these things are the strategy which are helping in the effective criminal justice system we are contributing one of the main contributors besides the police and the judiciary in criminal justice system Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yes. Dinesh Rao, right. Chief Government Forensic Pathologist. Right. Thank you so much. You're going to miss. You're going to miss Jamaica, aren't you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm you certainly to, had more I'm than enough work. I'm going to miss the team, the country, and the people. And uh, more than that, I should thank the people because they accepted me. Yeah. And well, uh, my strategies, you know. Where do you yes. move on to next? Because you've Good. made. I mean, saying that we have so many crimes that you know mm -hmm. it will help sharpen people's skills. Not such a good statement or a good. More like an indictment on Jamaica, but now that you've made your contribution here, where do you go next? I'm going back home. Okay, yes, home is it's, always it's great. Home, yes. It's home is a good home. place to be. Right, yes. Well, thank you very much right. for your thank contribution. Thank you so much. Doc. Good to have thank you. you. Yeah, thank Dr. You so Dinesh Rao, Chief uh, Forensic, Government Forensic Pathologist. Okay. Coming up, the eco crop model. I want to find out what that is. Yeah.